Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here on the Corn School down at Ridgetown College today, joined by Omafra entomologist Tracy Bowdy. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. We're standing in some, I mean, it's July 18th today, and, uh, you know, we're we're in knee-high corn. We've got some better yeah. stuff out of the, out there this day, these days, but a lot of it like that. And, uh, you know, we're going, I want to talk about western bean cutworm. Yep. A conversation you and I usually have in late June, but, you Not know, it's a conversation we're having July 18th. Yep, yep. So we're just catching for the first time Western Bean Cutworm moths, which is are a month behind schedule, but so is the crop. So things could align here. So we're trying to get the word out. Yeah. So um, talk about this season. It is backward. What does yeah. that do from a, from a moth peak flight and impact on, on yield and obviously that uh, that impact it can have on the crop? Yeah. So growing degree days were quite delayed this year. I know the crop didn't get in because of rain, but also growing degree days were, were less. So the cooler nights, even though we got some hot days, the cooler nights kept the growing degree days from accumulating a lot. And that that significantly impacts the, uh, the development of the insect. They overwinter in the soil, so they need enough heat to get out and emerge. And it took almost a month later for them to come out and, and start, start looking. Yeah, but they're a month late, but they may be coming. Yes. So uh, from a scouting perspective, we can't drop the ball here. No, I'm really concerned that people are gonna just not bother scouting this year because they think, oh, you know, it's not gonna be the, that kind of year. Well, in fact, we didn't get the crop in early enough to avoid the insects laying their eggs in, in the crops. So now this is going to align with pre-tasseled tassel corn right when we expect peat flight, which likely will line up around that first week of August, maybe even later. So scouting, instead of scouting now, like we normally do, it'll have to be pushed back to maybe the last week of July into August this year mm. to make sure we're, we're catching them. Quick review, uh, when we're out scouting, what are we looking for? You're looking for eggs. Um, obviously a trap by the field really helps tell you what the population's doing um, in, in your immediate area. Then focus on the field, that's more ideal. So it will be that pre-tassel, as long as there's a tassel in that whirl, mm. to when the tassel's fully out, not quite spent yet. That's what the mom is looking for to lay her eggs in. Then scout for three weeks in a row. If you find within 100 plants that you're looking at, um, five, five of those plants, whether it's one week or within those three weeks, you've reached threshold, that 5% threshold. So then you'd need to spray. Yeah. So we've reached th threshold. Yep. Um, what are our control options from a spray perspective? Yep, so you've got four options. There's Corrigin, there's Matador, but I'd caution using Matador in heat. There is Delegate, and there's Volume Express, which is a combination of the Corrigin and Matador. A lot of people love using Corrigin, and I'm really concerned. We've had area-wide use in some regions of Corrigin. I want to caution that they rotate out of that this year and use a different uh, product because resistance, this pest can develop resistance. Um, it has to one of the cry proteins in the transgenic BT corn. It can do the same with foliar insecticides. So rotate annually what you've used on this pest. Awesome. Hey, um, messages, get out and scout. Yep. They, you know, at uh, in July, July, end of July, end August. End of July, yep. August, get out and scout. The yep. uh, uh, Western bean cutworm uh, will certainly probably make an impact on us this yep. summer. Yep. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. <laughs>